Hey guys, a little more fast here? Okay, lab number four, starch and cereals. This will be quick. Okay, basically, uh, starch and cereals include categories such as flours, uh, I guess certain meals, breads, pastas, rice. Structure and composition, you have your bran. And actually what I'll do, uh, this actually might be a good idea. You guys just gave me an excellent idea. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little easier on us to envision this. Okay, it's more. Than, she's going to ask you to draw this, so know this. Structure and composition, bran covers kernel during growth. Um, so again, we can actually do this here. Basically, it's honestly, I'm not sure if this will actually turn out too well, but we'll, we'll see how it works. And oh, we need one more circle. This seems to be like a little baby circle. Oh, okay, we'll pretend that's inside that one. So, structure and composition. Bran covers kernel during growth. So there's your bran. Contains highest amount of fiber, rich in protein. So some some of the types of wheat, they take off the bran and they sell it separately. And basically, what that bran is is where your fibers from. So it basically depletes its nutrients. Um, endosperm uses in refined flours and cereals. So that's basically in here. This part here is your endosperm. Then you have your germ right here and your embryo right here. It's the lower end of your kernel, rich in fat and protein. Um, and you can read it up on the endosperm later. Varieties of wheat, hard, durum, bulgur, corn, hominy, hominy grits, have you ever heard of that? That's um, in the south. You'll know what hominy is. If, you're not, if you don't, Google it. If cornmeal, tortillas, corn flour, corn oil, corn syrup, other. Rice, white, do not wash before cooking, do not rinse after cooking. Brown, parboiled, just know white, brown, parboiled, converted. Know what parboiled rice is. Know the differences between white, brown, and parboiled. That, that's actually a uh, uh, question on the pre labs. So I know that. Other grains oats, rye, barley, uh, triticale, hybrid of wheat and rye, buckwheat seed of herb plant. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, well, well, we'll get back. Okay, so we have triticale, uh, buckwheat, etc. Cooking of rice, you need to know how to cook white rice. Easy, it's easy, it's very easy. Uh, Cook an amount of water that will be fully absorbed. Needs twice its volume in water. Boil water first and add rice. Bring back to boil. Cover and reduce heat. You just even Google a video on that. Cooking rice takes so little time. There's actually one called a uh, perfect rice where this uh, one woman actually. You can Google perfect rice, and the video more, more likely came up. And she learned from a Chinese, uh, well, a Chinese chef. It was like at what, from one of these restaurants, and the rice is beautiful. It looks extremely pretty. You, you can cook it that way if you want to take a little bit more time on your rice, but that's just one of those things. Uh, and it's called uh, Perfect Rice was the name of the video. Uh, I it, just Google it. Uh, it's a YouTube video. Um, okay, so cooking rice, you have oven cooking, same amount of water needed to use closed baking dishes. You've got brown rice, pre-cooked rice, rice pilaf, which uh, you can Google that as well. A lot of this, the best way to understand it, I suggest, uh, besides looking at these videos, definitely go online, uh, Google it, look at a video. If you, especially if you're a visual learner. Uh, if you like to read stuff, go ahead, Wikipedia, there it is. Um, also another one that isn't on here but is just basic and good to know. Microwavable rice, the easy way out. But uh, it's definitely fast. You can definitely use it. I don't suggest you use a microwave, but it, it doesn't give as much flavor, but that's one of the types of rice that is now becoming more popular. Uh, we have pasta, principal ingredient, amount of water to use in cooking, amount of size increases, holding, just have a good idea of that. Uh, she goes over this in class. This is see, this is why I was saying this was going to be fast, because basically you just need to know your bulk grains. Don't know, you don't need to know it that major, but just have a good idea of barley, buckwheat, groats, bulgur. These are just basically examples. Couscous, you're going to use couscous, believe me. A millet, you can use that. Buckwheat, you don't use as much in the lab. You got bulgur, barley, don't use those as much. Those are, are usually more expensive. Oat bran, possibly. Oat grows whole, more than likely. Oats rolled, yes. Oats steel cut, definitely. You'll probably use this more often. Quinoa, yes, you will use that occasionally, depending on the group you're in. Rye flakes, triticale, you can actually read that up there. That's, that's a good idea. Wheat berries, winter and spring. Wheat bran, wheat flakes, wheat germ. Uh, you can just kind of go through that because we already went over bran and germ. Um, oh, and then your interior ingredients. One thing I want to mention, which a lot of people don't understand, uh, is even though this is called buckwheat, it's a misnomer. If you don't, if you don't know what misnomer is, you can look that up. But, uh, well, actually, I'll just tell you. So basically, a misnomer is uh, when uh, something is named and it has nothing. It, it's not according. It's like the exact opposite of what you'd imagine it to be. Uh, I hope that's a fairly good explanation, but basically buckwheat is not really a wheat. 
that will surprise a lot of people. So if you are a gluten sensitive, you, you can actually have buckwheat and you won't have any reactions. Uh, buckwheat, because I'm gluten sensitive, so uh, I'm, I've been looking and buckwheat I, I, I do enjoy and it's, it depends on how you cook it. Some people think it's disgusting because it literally is brown when you cook it. Uh, buckwheat is actually not a grain. It's going to astound some people, but it's not a grain. It's actually a, uh, let me think, I, mean, I think they classified it as a seed. But it, it, it's, it's amazing. You can definitely use it. Let's see if she, she maybe she put it in here. See, powerhouse of nutrition. Definitely try it. It's got your, all, all your eight essential amino acids. So when you come to the meat section, they're going to say, basically, you have to have your protein. This actually has all eight essential amino acids, and that's what's actually found in protein. You def it, meat also has B vitamins. Here's your B vitamins. It's in your buckwheat. Vitamin E, iron, definitely need this. Potassium and phosphorus. They can ma be made into pilaf or used as stuffing for meats or vegetables, etc. Uh, so you can just play around with that. But that's a pretty good introduction, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.